What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com. And in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to create a realistic t-shirt mock-up in Photoshop. And while that remains one of my most popular videos, I decided to do something kind of fun and do a little bit of a riff on that. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a cool and quick way to present any of your logos in Adobe Photoshop. Alright guys, so as I mentioned, today we are going to be creating a realistic mock-up for our logos in Adobe Photoshop. A little while back, I created a tutorial on how to create a realistic t-shirt mock-up in Photoshop. And we're going to be using a lot of those same techniques today. Now, what I have here is a folder of a bunch of textures that I took myself. And these textures are included with my design course called Brand U. And for those of you guys who don't know, Brand U is a in-depth step-by-step course that takes you through the entire process for creating a unique visual brand identity. So for any of you guys out there who want to learn how to create some cool kick-ass logos and strong branding, be sure to check that out at teachmetodesign.com slash brand you. And I'll also put a link for that below in the description. So for this tutorial though, I'm going to grab one of these nice wood grain textures and just open it up in Photoshop. And you'll see as soon as I open it up here, our texture has a lot of cool stuff going on. It's got all these lines, some nails, a little bit of rust, and some stains. All right, so we're going to be using this as a base. The first thing I want to do here in Photoshop is double click on my background layer and just rename it original and then press Command and J to make a copy. And we'll rename this copy wood grain texture. Now the main reason I'm creating copy here is just in case we mess anything up but also because I want to change the size of the copy a little bit. So with my wood grain texture layer selected, I'm going to press Command and T on the keyboard to do a free transform, zoom out just a little bit, and then hold down the shift key and drag from the upper left corner outwards. All right, just to scale that up and then hit enter to apply the changes. Now from here, I'm going to hold down the alt option key and click on the adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette. And then we're going to choose hue saturation. Now, once you do that, you should see this dialog box appear. And from there, we're just going to check this off, this box that says use previous layer to create clipping mask and hit OK. Now, once you've done that, you'll see this little arrow here, and that's indicating and telling us that our clipping mask is applied. And now what we can do is we have complete control over the hue and saturation of this layer. So if we wanted to, you know, increase the saturation, make it darker, make it lighter, we have full control over our wood grain texture um, and we can edit it in a non-destructive way. So the next thing I want to do is come over here to my channels tab and I'm just going to take a look at the red, green, and blue channels to see which one has the most contrast. And there's not a huge difference here but I think the blue is the way to go. Alright, so I'm going to grab my blue channel and drag it down here to the new layer icon to make a copy of it. And then I'm going to press Command and M on the keyboard to bring up my curves adjustment. Now, all we're going to do here is just click a point somewhere in the middle of the grid and drag it down into the right. We want to get more contrast out of this. So we want our, all the dark colors to be almost pure black, and we want the whites to be even brighter and lighter than before. Now, once you're happy with this, go ahead and click OK. The next thing we're going to do is hold down the control key and click on our blue copy and choose duplicate channel. Now over here where it says destination and document, let's click in here and choose new. So this is going to set it as a new document of its own and we're going to call this displacement or displacement map. In one of my older tutorials, we used the displacement map to create the realistic t-shirt mockup. So we're going to be using the same basic principles today. All right, so go ahead and click OK. And the next thing we're going to do is come up to the filter menu and we need to blur this a little bit. So we're going to choose blur, Gaussian blur, and let's leave the radius set to about three to four pixels before clicking OK. Now from here, I can just press Command S or go to the file menu and save this file. And we're just going to save it right on our desktop. Okay, and now we can close out of it by either clicking on this X up here or pressing Command and W. 
Now that's the shortcut to just close out of a tab or a window. And once you do that, you should be back here in your original image. And as long as you still have the channels tab open, click on RGB. And that's just going to bring back our original texture and colors. All right, so at this point, we're going to switch back over to our layers tab. And this is the part where we want to bring in our text or our logo. So I'm going to pop over to Adobe Illustrator for a second. And you'll see here that I have this logo, which I whipped up pretty quickly, just using a couple of fonts and some basic shapes from our logo creation kit. Now, the logo creation kit is completely free. Uh, it's a giveaway that I had posted about on the channel a little while ago, and you guys can still get it just by signing up for our email list. All right, all I'm gonna do now is just click on the logo and press Command C, and then press Command and the Tab key to pop back over to Photoshop. Now I'm gonna click on my top layer here, which is our Hue Saturation Adjustment layer, and then we're going to paste this by pressing Command and V on the keyboard. Now I wanna make sure that we paste this as a smart object, and I'll show you guys why. So go ahead and click OK, and then hold down the Alt, Option, and Shift key, and drag outwards from any of the four corners to scale this up a bit. And that's gonna constrain the proportions as we do it. All right, so once you're happy with the size of your logo, go ahead and press Enter to apply the changes. Now I'm gonna double click this layer and just call it logo. And the reason we wanna make this a smart object is so that we can double click on it and replace it with any other logo or text that we want. And we'll have the same effects that we're about to create applied to it anytime. So it's going to serve as basically a template that you guys can update and reuse without having to go through the whole process every time. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And now with my logo layer selected, I'll come up to the filter menu and we're going to choose Distort Displace from the menu. Now, for the horizontal and vertical scale, we're gonna leave it set to about five for each and click OK. Now, at this point, it's going to ask us to locate our displacement map. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the displacement map layer and hit Open. Now that we've applied our displacement map, you can see that there's some wavy lines in here and it's basically using our texture as a map to create all of these you know, indentations and so forth. To push it even further, we're actually going to use our duplicate channel that we created earlier on. So with your logo layer still selected, come over to the Channels tab, select the blue copy layer, and you can either hold down the Command key and just click on the thumbnail icon like this, but there's also a small icon at the bottom of the palette here that says Load Channel as Selection. It kind of looks like a small circle or square with a dashed line. So either one of those will work fine as long as you get these marching ants indicating that you have an active selection. So once you've done that, go ahead and click on RGB once again at the top, and then come back over to our layers panel. And now what we wanna do is add a layer mask. So once I add the layer mask, you'll see that it kind of makes our logo look a little bit faded. But what we can do is press Command J to duplicate this layer a bunch of times. All right, so as I'm doing that, I have maybe about, mm, 15 copies, let's say. But now it really looks like our logo is painted on. So what I wanna do now is close this properties panel and I'm going to select my top logo copy, scroll down and hold the shift key and select my first copy. And then we'll press command and G to put them into a group folder, which we can rename logo. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to do is hold down the alt option key and click on the adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette once again, and now I will choose solid color. So before we move on, you just wanna make sure to check off this box that says use previous layer to create clipping mask, and then hit okay. Now in the very beginning, we applied a clipping mask to this hue saturation adjustment layer on top of our wood grain texture. But now, as you guys can see, clipping masks aren't just limited to layers. You can also apply them to group folders. So that's a really cool way to just change the color of an entire group. All right, so I'm just gonna make it white for now so it stands out and then hit okay. And now I can come back to my hue saturation adjustment layer and we can actually desaturate and make the texture a little bit darker as well. And that's just gonna help our logo stand out even more. If I click on my wood grain texture layer, I can add additional adjustment layers here and they will automatically have a clipping mask applied to them because I'm adding it in between the two existing uh, the existing layer and clipping mask. 
So now I can add a little bit more contrast here using a curves adjustment. Uh, maybe I want to, you know, saturate it and go the other way. All right, so it's not so faded and just brighten it up a bit. And we can also come back in here and change the color of our logo. So if we want to make it like a dark green or a light green or blue, pretty much anything we want. You know, nothing is, is off limits there. But for now, I'm just going to leave it set to white and hit OK. Now, this is the cool part. I mean, it, it's looking pretty cool. I know there's a few parts that are, you know, pretty covered up. So um, what I want to show you guys now is how we can update this. So I'm going to come back to our first logo smart object here, and double click it, and that's just going to open it back up here in Illustrator. So if I delete this, and I just grab my text tool, and let's just go ahead and type out a word. We'll just say uh, placeholder. I'm going to scale it up a bit so you guys can see what's happening here. I'm just going to change the font maybe to something else that I have, like a nice looking font like that, like Montana. Scale it up and hit Command S to save it. And now I can press Command and Tab to come back over to Photoshop. And if you just give it a couple of moments, because it has to update all of these copies that we have here, you'll see that you will now have an entirely different kind of arrangement or lockup. So now it's using that script instead of our logo um, here in the mockup. All right, so again, if I come back over here, I can grab any of these. This is the logo creation kit here. So let me grab, uh, I'll use this one for a second, copy it, paste it in here in place of our script font. And now I can just save it once again, come back over to Photoshop, and just give that a moment to update. I just wanted to try one of these other logos to see how it looks instead of just using a single line of text so that it will fill out a little bit more of this space. All right, so you get the same effect there. It's pretty cool looking and it creates a nice texture on our background. But of course, you guys can create any kind of logo you want here to do this and you know, feel free to play around with some of these. So if I double click it again and maybe I'll grab this one just to see what that looks like paste it on in here, scale it up, and then whenever you're ready, you just wanna center it, and then press Command S to save it, and then it's going to update in Photoshop. Okay, and depending on the complexity of your logo, it may take a little bit longer or a little bit less time just to update everything. All right, but let's see how that one looks. Okay, so as you can see here, this one is pretty much all white. And the reason for that is because it's not merged and knocked out. So I'm just going to add a background color here and send it to the back so I can see what's happening. And I'm going to lock this layer really quickly by pressing Command and 2 on the keyboard. And I'll select the entire logo, come up to the Window menu, and choose my Pathfinder. Now from here, because everything is outlined, I can just hit the Merge option which is this uh, third one from the left on the bottom row. And now with my direct selection tool, I can click on any area of white, come up to select and choose same fill and stroke. And then we're just going to delete it, unlock everything by pressing command option two, and just get rid of this red background layer that we were using as a, a mat. And now I can press command S once again. And this time when I come back over to Photoshop, my hope is that now the logo will be knocked out as opposed to before where we just had solid shapes. And it basically uh, did that pretty well. All right, so you can turn off some of these copies if you want, or you can use you know, more if you wanna use additional copies. Um, but another thing that you could try is to actually delete this layer mask so that you have your original logo again. I'm just gonna trash all of these copies and let's come back to our channels tab. Now, before, when I held down the command key and clicked on the thumbnail, or clicked this little icon down here, I had my selection, clicked on RGB, came back over to my layers tab, and I just added a mask, right? And that kind of made it look pretty faded. So this time, if we want more of our logo to show up, let's try inverting the selection. So I'm going to press Command-Shift-I on the keyboard, and then add a layer mask. 
All right, and this time it'll create a slightly different looking effect that'll be a little bit more subtle. All right, but if we want to intensify it, hold down the command key and click on the layer mask. We can invert the selection and press Alt, Option, and Delete on the keyboard. Okay, and that's just going to basically add even more black on top of the areas here that were previously gray. And you can do the same thing and kind of change the colors to anything you want. All right, so we can go with like a dark red, maybe, you know, desaturate the wood or colorize it if you want to get a nice, you know, variety of effects. All right, but for now, I still think, you know, the white was looking pretty good. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that you guys can use logos and you can, you know, kind of get this going here in a nice looking mock-up. And again, by making it a smart object, you can basically have any logo in here that you want. So I'm just going to replace this one last time to our original lockup that we had and press command S to save it, pop back over to Photoshop and there you go. You can use the original channel and make duplicates of it or you can invert the selection. It depends on, you know, the result. I would definitely encourage you guys to try using the normal channel and then just adding a mask. Okay. And then if you have to duplicate it again, just press command J to do that. Or if you wanted to do, you know, something that looks a little bit different, you can invert the selection and then just apply a layer mask that way. So we've kind of covered both approaches here. Hopefully that was not too confusing for you guys because I wanted to show you a couple of different ways that you can do this. All right, but that's the basic idea, guys. It's very easy to update. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please give us a thumbs up, like, and comment on the YouTube channel. And also be sure to sign up for our email list, guys, get the logo creation kit, and also check out our brand new design course so you can step up your skills and learn how to be a badass logo and brand designer. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your support, and we'll see you next time.